Chaitanya said about Marari Gupta, who was an, an Ayurvedic doctor from a great um, heritage of Ayurveda in his family. He said, anyone who considers Marari Gupta to be simply an Ayurvedic doctor does not understand. Because Marari Gupta, whoever he treats, he treats their body, their mind, and he liberates their soul. Lord Chaitanya declared, Marari Gupta is an incarnation of Hanuman. Hanuman, when Lakshman was seriously ill in the battle of Sri Lanka, his enthusiasm He jumped to the Himalayas. He searched for the particular herb that was required. When, he, when it was taking too much time, he lifted the entire mountain and jumped back. That was his determination. That was his enthusiasm, his surrender, and his devotion. Shama Pallava Prabhu was truly from the core of his heart. He was a Vaishnav. He was a devotee. Like Marari Gupta. He understood that however much benefits he can do for someone's body and mind, death is inevitable. sometimes even in the most unexpected ways. At the same time, he understood that this body is a wonderful facility by which we can serve the Lord, and by treating people's bodies, it's a wonderful opportunity to help them receive the blessings of the Lord. And that was truly his heart's motivation. To treat the body, the mind, and the soul. We've heard from several devotees, and there's so many more who would have loved to speak. But due to time factor, it's not possible. How much enthusiasm, how much genius, how much determination. On one level, we can analyze that due to some past karmas, he was truly a brilliant genius. But from a deeper perspective, it was because of his profound burning desire to serve. That's what activated, whether it's karma or whatever, whatever, that's what activated who he was and what he accomplished. From the beginning of his life and devotional service at Sri Shirata Gopinath Temple, there was a profound, genuine, deep desire to please his guru, to please the Vaishnavas, to be an instrument of wonderful service for Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya's mission. And he had a calling. He saw, and he would share with me, he saw so much suffering in so many devotees' lives, and he wanted to make a difference. 
He saw so many ailments that were limiting what devotees could do, and he wanted to make a difference. So he dived deeply into the ocean of Ayurveda. And he developed such a higher taste, not just for the science, but for the reason he was studying the science. It was his surrender, his shadarnakati. He took shelter of his service. He was absorbed. Because devotion infused everything he did. And his Vaishnav character and qualities were so much foundational to how he did whatever he did. People had trust in him. And that's an important part of treating people because they're not going to follow you unless they have trust in you, because Ayurveda is not just giving a shot and then telling the next person in line to come up. It means following. Wherever I went in the world, I would find people who had so much trust in his, the integrity of his desire to serve them. And they're there, therefore, they fully opened their hearts and were willing to follow what he was teaching. And so many were cured. But they weren't just cured. They had such appreciation for the qualities of a Vaishnava, qualities of a Vaishnava. And for people who were devotees, they showered blessings upon him. And for people who were not devotees, their appreciation for the qualities of a Vaishnava opened their hearts to receive Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explained the beginning of true devotional service is appreciation of a Vaishnava. So his Krishna Bhakti was infused in all of his brilliance, in all of his determination, enthusiasm, in his life. <coughs> he cared. There was nothing superficial, artificial, or shallow about Shama Pallava put his heart into it because he cared. It was a service to God and he cared. I cannot accept that whatever he planned to do was shattered because devotional service doesn't work that way. In Krishna consciousness, Srila Prabhupada writes, Krishna doesn't accept what we offer him. He accepts the sincerity in which it's offered. Jatayu, he went to fight Ravana, and he went to fight to win. Somehow or other, Ravana cut him down. And Sita was taken away. But Ram, when he put Jatayu on his lap, he told Jatayu, you are, vic you are victorious. 
because you may not have completed the particular mission of rescuing Sita, but because you gave your life to do it, therefore you are completely victorious and successful in your mission. This is the basis of bhakti. We try for the results, but our success is not the results. Our success is the sincerity, the dedication, the surrender, and the love in which we're trying to get those results. That is the actual accomplishment. In the eyes of Krishna, and in the eyes of the Vaishnav community, Whatever Shambhalava Prabhu dreamed of, whatever he dedicated his life for, whatever he sacrificed everything else to achieve in the service of Srila Prabhupada, his guru, the Vaishnavas, and Ayurveda, It's a complete fulfillment. It's accomplished. Nothing was shattered. He did it. Because he did it with all sincerity. And because he pleased Krishna. He pleased his Guru and the Vaishnavas in his efforts. From our perspective in this world, what happened? And what will happen? We live with trust. What's lost is not what, tree, what, it's not what he gave his life to try to accomplish. Krishna will compensate. Krishna will not allow a devotee who has sacrificed everything to do something so wonderful in the service of the Vaishnava and humanity to have that go in vain. Ramchandra, if for nothing else, he was going to get Sita back for the glory of Jatayu. so that Jatayu's efforts did not go in vain. What to speak of his love for Sita. Krishna has his plan. And Krishna's plan for his sincere, dedicated devotees is always perfect. We may not understand we cannot understand. Perhaps sometimes we're not even supposed to understand logically why something happens. Achint, it's inconceivable. But where logic has its limitations, faith can take us beyond into the realm of truth, into the realm of love. We have faith in Krishna's words and in the words of the, the scriptures and the acharyas that for a devotee, however things may appear to our mind and senses, we should know one thing, for a sincere devotee who dedicates their lives, even if their mind may be a little racing here and there, if their hearts are in the right place, in their spirit of surrender, Krishna will do what is perfect for that devotee. And I believe that Krishna has done what was perfect for our beloved Shama Bala Bhavra. Perfect for his spiritual
progress and also perfect, how inconceivable it may be for us now, for the mission he gave his life to. Neha vikramanastos ti pratyavayo navidyate svalpam apyasya dharamate trayate mahatobha. In devotional service, Krishna tells, nothing is ever lost. And that's on many levels. It's not just on the level of our own personal spiritual progress. That's for sure. But it's also in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada, and Sri Sri Radha Gopinath that we're striving for. What is lost? His eternal soul is with Krishna. According to Krishna's will, Krishna has taken him where Krishna wants him perfectly out of Krishna's supreme, all-encompassing, perfect love. That's where his soul is. We can celebrate his good fortune. We could celebrate his life. But what is lost? is our association in this material world from such a wonderful person. I'm not personally missing him because of his Ayurveda, because Krishna will compensate. I'm missing him because of the love, the devotion, the surrender, and the sweet character in which he did his Ayurveda and in which he chanted the holy names and in which he was determined to serve in everything and every, every way that we heard of today. That body that he was residing in was a medium by which a medium by which he was shining with Krishna consciousness to enlighten the world. He was a friend. For me, he was a dearest friend, a dearest son a dearest inspiration, a dearest doctor. His smile, his sincerity, as Govinda Prabhu said, his madness, which was an expression of his enthusiasm and his brilliance to serve his soft, tender, compassionate heart that was filled with Krishna. We have lost that association. And our hearts cry. Those tears are our offerings of love and gratitude to his eternal soul. And with those tears, we can celebrate a wonderful, beautiful life that inconceivably, but perfectly, departed in the way it did from our vision. 
Thank you very much.